here at Shangri-La, Dead Man's is just further up from us. We've had two days of northeastly. There won't be too many bites, but the water is ice cold. What I'm doing is basically putting on a nylon trace. Our target species is going to be diamonds, sandies, and the odd honeycomb, but more diamonds than anything else. I just want to show you a knot that I use quite often. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take a braid leader on. We're going to make the standard loop and we're going through the eye of the actual swivel. So we've got our granny knot there. And all we do is we literally go around my finger one, two, three, four or five times. We put the tag in through. Now don't ask me what knot this is, I've got no idea, but it's a knot that seems to hold quite nicely. And we pull it tight. So that's basically my joining knot at the moment. If I've already got my fully made up nylon trace, I'm just going to cut off that little bit of a tag in that I've got. There we go. The C at the moment is a little bit on the big side. The northeasterly is still blowing quite hard. Um, so I'm going to go straight nylon and just see how it goes. I'm using the, the J hook and this would be our Sui Tenno. The only reason I'm putting it on is because I'm hoping for a sand shark more than anything else. Um, I still have to put my sinker trace on and for that I'm going to use 7.5 nylon. Always remember when you're down here you never know what to expect so if the diamonds are around I've got my glove. And that's very important because of those teeth. I'm using a running swivel on this one. I'm not using my T-swivel that I normally use. And only because I need more movement in the actual water. Um, whether it makes any difference, the sea is a bit up. Our first man is now running down to the left here. I think that's Jace. I'm not too sure. He obviously wants to get the first throw in. First, first bait in the water normally gets the first fish. Get my sinker clip. I'm just going to put a 7 ounce on with one of these little imps that we use quite a bit, especially when the wind blows. Okay, the imp is basically designed so when you've got your J hook, you can actually hook it up to it or with your dangle. When it hits the water, obviously that imp part will just push it off and the whole hook comes off. So that when that part of it actually hits the water and actually comes loose. Lovely for throwing when you're throwing into a big wind, a northeasterly like we've got at the moment. They do work well. Okay, basically rigging a J-hook for a diamond is slight, almost the same as a circle hook. I know we're always on about using circle hooks. It's easier to release, but I don't think it's going to be too many bites, so I'm definitely going to go with a J-hook and see what bites. Could be a milky, could be one of those small hammers and that. Let's see what's going on first. So I'm going to measure it. And again, it's the same principle. Cutting it down. My bait is frozen, it's not fresh bait by any means. Taking the point of the, the sui through the lips, like that. Going down, going down, like that. We're just going to give a couple of little marks on the top here. Just to allow our cotton to actually sit on and hold on properly. As we turn. I'm using our universal cotton at the moment just to tie up a bit this is the belly part and I don't like wasting the belly because that holds a lot of flavor a lot of smell I don't want too much smell going out until I actually know what's going on um, a lot of times if the guys come here and they make a nice mushy bait that milky that spinner that little hammer gets you so until I actually know what I'm doing, I'm going to stick to a bait that's not too smelly. I'm just adding a little bit of flavor, not too much. I'm just going to add it to one size and one size, 
one side only. And there's no real rush to get a bait in the water as far as I'm concerned because I need that water to drop a little bit more. It's just an hour after high tide and the sea is still a bit big. I need the water to die down, break on that outer bank. It just makes it better for a diamond. He doesn't like rough water. So that's the bait I'm basically going to throw as my testing bait. And guys, when you're out there, nothing better than a nice little dowel cloth, hand towel to actually clean your hands on. When you get home, just dip it into a basin of water. Next day, throw it in the washing machine and you're good to go. These things help a hell of a lot. Um, your EVA on your grip doesn't get slippery, slimy. So think about helping yourself to one of these little um, dowel hand towels. They are very cheap, inexpensive, and you don't bugger up your wife's lovely hand towels at home. Let's go and have a look. Okay, so basically what we've got is a long wading bank, a deep bank out on the left, a deep bank on the right hand side with a big hole in the middle over here. It's about 50 meters wide. As you see over there in the distance, you can see Shangri-La, first bait in the water and I can tell you now already there's peckers biting and you can see the seas a bit up I mean there's a lot of white water breaking in the front here not ideal conditions for the diamond but we'll persevere and I'm sure we'll get a fish I've literally just thrown the bait in the water and it feels like I'm getting a bite already I don't know whether it's wave or not there could be a lot of current here which I'm very scared that there's there's a lot of current for some reason. Okay, there we go. Ah! Flippin' hell. Okay. Yeah! Unfortunately, that was the first one. We got them into a nice fish here. Yeah? First bait. Uh, feel like a diamond. Uh, five minutes in the water. I'm tight. I feel like a big fish now. And also, it helps you to hold on to the actual fish. And we'll just see how Jace is going over here at the moment. How far, Jace? On the shore, mate. I like the end on the left. Separates the men from the boy, these big fish. That's your first throw at that tournament, eh? Tournament. Hey? First throw. First throw. Well done. Nice. There we go. Look at that tip bending. This is basically what we came for, these lovely little diamonds. Jace is using the tennis racket string here. This diamond is about 50 to 60 kilos. One thing I want to show you is how, look, look at this. This fish has been caught before because obviously it's been cut out there. But look at the mouth and where the hook is actually caught. If you can see properly, look at that hook is hooked in the side of the mouth. Perfect circle look. That's how circle looks are meant to work. Okay, simple as that. Okay, there we go. Tenno, as you can see, perfectly in the side of the mouth where it was supposed to be. One meter seventy-two. First throw with my new Daiwa tournament rod. What a beautiful rod. Got a nice throw out there, 150, 160 meters with a big bait. And five minutes, I was away. Fish of 1.72 meters, diamond. Uh, I couldn't ask for anything better. With a new rod, it's christened. Yeah, 
guys, that's a combination of uh, mackerel and mosbanga that I got last night. Uh, I went to fish for some bait. And as you can see, that's the rod and the reel that does the job. The dogfight and the new Daiwa tournament. Awesome, awesome, magnificent setup. Uh, you won't get better. One hand operation, light as hell and as strong as hell. That's all you need. We're down here at Port Dunford. Myself and Ray decided to come have a throw. Two days of Northeaster. Uh, not necessarily enough. We need three or four days. But yeah, we said let's come have a throw. First bait, fish within two minutes. And it was awesome, awesome to get a fish on the new Dawa tournament. Uh, the rod cast well, the rod handles the fish well, it's got enough backbone, you will never get a better rod than this. Value for money and one of the most technically advanced rods you will find. I've enjoyed it. I've, I've fished it almost every single rod that's on the market, but this is something else. Yeah, where are you? First throw I had, Shad unfortunately gave me a hard time there. This is my second throw now. Hopefully I catch a diamond and catch up to old Jace here, who's giving me a hiding at the moment. Uh, we just have to correct that. It's not old Jace. <laughs> uh, I look younger than Ray. I act younger than him. And yeah, you can, you can see Ray's getting grey. Going away here now with a nice fish. Okay, here we go. And that's what we want. There we go. I think I got my diamond. Oh, that's it. That's it. Basically what happened there is I actually felt the, the dunk, dunk, and then it came slack line, slack line. But I got a J hook, so I had to hit. Guys, we're gonna get double up. Double up, yeah. Here we go. Jace is going away as well. My fish is angry. You can slack line, Jace. That's why it's so important to use a line that you can actually see because when you're fishing in a group, it's always easier to see where your braid is actually going. That's why that chartreuse J braid and I've got gator braid yellow is so important because you can actually follow your line with your head lap. You can actually see where the fish is. It's in the wave there. I can see him now. He's in the wave there. I'm fishing with the, the Elite 15 foot heavy. It's got more than enough backbone to pull these fish. Been in that rod, absolutely phenomenal. The nice part about a softer rod like this is that this rod, when you're catching a lot of fish, especially for competition fishing, when you're catching six, seven diamonds in a row, it's very forgiving on the actual back. You reckon you're going to come half the old man now? Yeah. <laughs> See, the, the, the beard's getting grey, huh? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> it was a little brown, right? Brown skate. And what's nice about this one, look at this. It's got no... Um, Spark on the back here. It's got absolutely no spark whatsoever. And that's why he bit so funny. You see where the J-Hawk got him? Not quite in the mouth, but it was good enough to get him. And it's a male. There's its claspers, its reproductive organs, just like all males. And he's got two, one on either side. There we go. What do you give me? 10, 12 kilos? 12, yeah. 12 kilos. He might be sandies around. Because with the brown skate come the sandies. Like I said in the beginning, the water was not that cold. So it's not just going to be diamonds. I think we're going to get the whole night through. We're going to get different species of fish. Here you go, Jason. He's just sticking back in the water. <laughs> and Jace giving me a hard time about a little brown skate like that. They pulled me so hard. Well, that's fishing, guys. <laughs> Basically what I was using there was a mackerel with nothing on the side, our 10-0 J-hook, 
and over here you can see how the tail actually rubbed against it so be very careful when you're fishing for these fish the diamonds the, the honey cones the sandies the spark and that might be what happened to that one there the spark might have broken off when it got tangled in the actual one mil nylon that i had here okay just like that you see that guys look how it faded so now i'm gonna have to change to wire and we'll see what happens after that. Let's go see what Jace is doing over there. Guys, I've just had another little dunk dunk on my line, on my braid, should I say. So hopefully that flat fish has just gone and sat on it. <coughs> but we are using grapnel sinkers, so that might scare the fish away. So a lot of times you get that and drop. So we're just gonna be a bit more patient then when we're fishing with a cone sinker there he is and again like I said with a grapnel sinker you've got to be a lot more patient when it comes to that bite there come on there, woo, woo. there we go there we go come on eat it come on eat it feels like a smaller fish could be another brown skate it's not a diamond well, I don't think it's a diamond because it's not pulling me down. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to tease him a bit. Just by doing that. The fish is not committing yet. It's a very small fish. He's not getting that bait in his mouth. Oh, another nice fish. It fit for a while. Very, very strange bait. Very s small bite. And it just swam in, swam in, swam in. And as it came to the shore break, it turned and went away. It feels like a diamond. I never know. Another decent diamond. actually giving us a hard time so we're gonna actually move further up dead man's towards chiefs first stream second stream we're gonna take a walk that way and have a look see what's going on down there find ourselves a nice wading bank that we can actually wade onto and throw try for a basically a sandy or something like that because the water's not that cold so it's actually it's actually more sandy conditions and it's amazing that I haven't seen one come out yet but we'll go we'll try we'll see what happens at the moment I got one of those stupid small little Mulkies messing me around or, or little hammers so we'll just see how it goes give me a hard time here but I've put a big bait on so we'll see how it goes okay guys that concludes our little fishing session at uh, Port Dunfit over here we had lovely conditions we got some good fish we had a lot of fun so yeah Jace over to you but yeah I don't know what Ray means by fun because <laughs> I had all the fun Four throws, three diamonds, uh, all fish around about the 170, 180 uh, centimeter mark. It was an awesome evening for me. I um, spent about four hours fishing. It was a few bites, not a lot. Uh, the bait that seems to work was the moss bunker and mackerel uh, mix. 
Metalhead with the Mosbanga fillet worked fantastic for the night. Uh, it was basically shot for shot for me. And there was lots of other small fish around, uh, hammerheads, uh, there was one or two browns. So all in all it was a good evening. And from now uh, we're going to go try another spot and see what goes on there.